<laughs> Hi, Carl. Hi, Nolan. You know what? Did you? Oh, shit. Sorry, Drew. I just dropped my microphone. I thought it was in my inhaler, so I shoved <laughs> it in my mouth. Um, <laughs> hey, you I, don't understand. Guys, guys, you don't understand. This is uh, my favorite. Carl Weezer. Thank you, Nolan. I was going to say, I've seen Nolan naked, and then the answer is, well, who hasn't? <laughs> the big program nolan north back with retro replay we're in the basement november 19th 2020 we're getting closer this shit shit storm's almost over folks uh big day today this is one of uh, uh, you know rob paulson our guest today one of my all-time favorites a hero and um uh animaniacs yakko if, if you don't know in animaniacs which is uh has a, a renewal tomorrow um new episodes Coming out on Hulu tomorrow, November 20th. So, so excited. Uh, totally insane. Never mansplaining. You got to check that out. It's going to be very, Can't very wait. cool. Yeah. Um, but my new way to start off the show, a sip. Mm. It's delicious. And topics and tangents. I love this. Um, I love dolphins, okay? mammals of the ocean yeah with whales what about what about echo the dolphin that game sucked <laughs> that game sucked echo echo should be in a japanese fishing net i don't care about that one no i i, I love this because I, I i have some uh, things to add to this little story we found here uh dolphins apparently deliberately get high on puffer fish nerve toxins i, I, I so there was a documentary apparently and young dolphins were seen care like they didn't kill the this puffer fish and when a puff, puffer fish apparently when it when it feels like it's being threatened it will release a certain toxin and this pod is carefully passing a puffer fish around which is hysterical to me you got puff puff it's kind of, it, it, you got to almost picture like the school bullies just going and just passing around you know like the, the kid, ah, and he's like, no, give where you all want your lunch money. And they just chew on the fish just so it scares it enough to shoot off this toxin. And they're huffing it. Yeah. They they just, they're huffing puffer fish toxins. And, and they casually, here we go, carefully chewing on the puffer, passing it between one another. The marine mammals then enter what seems to be a trance-like state, hanging out with their nose at the surface of the water as if fascinated by their own <laughs> reflections. By the way, I did not know that the reflections were both ways, from the underneath and on the top. Uh, yeah, documentary, Dolphins Spy in the Pod. It's the name of the documentary, produced by the BBC. That is, that's amazing. It's awesome. That, that proves something. Dolphins, this is a true, this is absolutely true, are also one of the other species, and I'm sure I've, rec I've mentioned this somewhere on this, this program before, will have sex um, for, for, for fun. fun. Uh, not just for reproduction. Here's one of the growing kids, your Uncle Noli. In the animal kingdom, sex is usually used for reproduction, unless you're a dolphin or a guy. <laughs> then you just, you know, you're stabbing whatever you need, just for giggles. You know what I mean? Stab for fun, stab for laughs. Uncle Noli knows sometimes. That's what's, what's cool, though. What's crazy is that because, like, it's neuro, the neurotoxin would normally, like, I think, kill most animals and people. Uh, it's like if you don't cook a puffer fish the right way, you you die. Yeah. But they know just the right amount to like extract, so that doesn't kill them, but it gets them kind of messed up. To hop. Yeah. yeah. But you know, like my brain, as you guys know, and I love you for this. You know me. My brain went to like, you know, they run out of puffer fish. Next thing you know, you you seen them in the grocery store, like you know, doing whippets out of <laughs> out of like you know <laughs> cans of uh, whipped cream, like. Like it's like, what is that dolphin doing back in here at the Gelsons? <laughs> so dolphins get high, and have sex for. They are. Um, they need to be stopped. <laughs> no. Dolphins are just. It just. You know what? It just. I, I'm. I am going to run for office. 
I'll get rid of all the dolphins in the grocery stores. Count on that. Finally! I don't even know where to start with this. Roberto Esquivel Cabrera from Saltillo, Mexico. He claims he has... I'm, I, there's no other way, so I'm just not going to beat around. Jump right in. You ready? I'm just yeah. jumping. Jump. Come, come right, at, right at you, kids. He claims to have the world's biggest penis. Okay? Look at my face. Not going to laugh. He wanted to be recognized for the world's largest penis. Guinness Book type recognized. What do you do? What do you do when you say I have the world's largest penis? You, you, you measure that thing out. You lay that out. You know, just get some friends, whatever you need to do. Stretch. I don't know. Tape measure. No, no, no. We're not measuring by length. We're measuring by weight. <laughs> he has an 18.9 inch member penis. Uh, I don't know why they call it a member. It's like, it's like, it's like the dick club. Well, I'm a member of the dick club. <laughs> in this uh, case, it basically is another it, appendage. And he weighed it out uh, at two pounds. So get this. So he has an 18.9 inch penis. But doctors who have examined it have reported to say that 13 inches are just excess skin. But but that's still penis, right? I mean, is that <laughs> like, I mean, it's still penis, or is he just have like, how do you, I mean, what is that? God damn, brother's got a love sausage. 13 inches of skin? That's going to put him down. See, now, I, I'm not good at math, but that's putting him down at 5.9. That's, you know, you're, you're now you're busting in the real world. Uh, but if you, but now here's the, what I find incredible. What if he's only 5.9 inches, but still two pounds? Phenomenal. <laughs> Phenomenal. That is like the, the, you know, the big can of beans that you get at the store? Yeah. That's what he's got. He's got this and then that. That's like a World War II shell. That they used to drop on the soldiers. That's just, and you know, and everybody's probably sitting there. Ha ha ha! He's got a big penis. Whatever, thirteen inch skin. I don't care what it is. Whatever it is, um, Roberto's not happy. Not only does he want to be in the uh, Guinness Book of World Records, apparently, the fifty-two year old uh, said it has caused him to lose jobs. I don't know what he's doing with it. I mean, is he showing it to customers? Doesn't how matter how big it is, Roberto. I don't know what. what? Caused him to lose jobs, harmed his relationships, because he's probably knocked people unconscious with it. Um, forced to live alone and forage for food. His dick is making him hungry. This is another level of penis. Dude, have you seen? Have you not seen the video? I've seen the video. It's. <laughs> have you seen the video? Kids. Go in the other room. If you're of age, roll the video. <laughs> it's so big. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, no. That is not a penis. What we just saw, that is an appendage. It's so full but that on. is, I think that thing had its own, I, I, think, I think I saw a hand. I think it had a hand. <laughs> it's like Quato from Total Recall. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like lives, it's like another human that it, lives in. That's not a penis. No. <laughs> and the 13 inches of excess skin, that's not, I mean, that is, that's like. Poor guy. That looked like he had like a fruit bat hanging from his <laughs> groin. Um, There's that one shot though in the video where he's like super proud, you know, where he's like standing up and he's got his arm and he's like <laughs> doing like doing the like it's like the penis hero stance, you know, basically. Drew's right. He had the penis hero stance, <laughs> um, you know, uh, which you know, event, you know, they didn't use for the Avengers. <laughs> Uh, game. Should have. When I did Iron Man, I did one of the. I did the hero landing, then stood up and did the Roberto <laughs> penis hold. Um, but when, that out. by the way, did you see? Uh, that's not even a, a fake mime. He his he had, he he held his penis with an extended arm. <laughs> that, I mean, <laughs> this is gonna be a great episode. It's it's gonna be terrible. <laughs> it's gonna be a great episode. Uh, I'm excited because that penis is—I mean, it's—it makes you want to yakko, uh, and because it's so wacko. 
and Dot? It's just a huge dick. It's just there's nothing I can say about it. <laughs> Let's play Animaniacs because Rob Paulson's here and uh, he's a genius and he's not a dick. I have no segues here. Kids, I'm trying, but that was disturbing. And if you want to stop watching right now, I get it. Otherwise, join us for Animaniacs. Let's go. All right, kids, it's time to pay a few bills around here at Retro Replay. And this week's soup is coming to us from our good friends at Manscaped. Manscaped.com, uh, they are just pioneers and global leaders in men's below-the-waist grooming. You want to get the Lawnmower 3.0, a trimmer that has a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents uh, with advanced, I love this, skin-safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. Um, I like that. Their Perfect Package 3.0 is the Easter egg you've been waiting for uh, in the ultimate male hygiene hack. See, it's like a video game reference. I just, when I think Easter eggs, I think of your Easter eggs. Shave them up, clean them up. Um, you don't have to go right down to the skin if you don't want. Eh, leave a little a little fro down there. Who cares? Get festive. Uh, turn the pubes into a, a Christmas tree or a menorah. Whatever your faith. I love it. Go after it. Uh, it's also great if you ride a cycle. Uh, seriously, uh, you can shave down your legs, trim that down. Any hair in your ear, uh, your beard, whatever. Don't go from the pubes to the beard. People are going to say, you, you have dick breath. You don't want that. Manscaped will take care of all this stuff. Um, great for the shopping list. Make it happen. What I want you to do, go to manscaped.com. 20% off plus free shipping with the code REPLAY. R-E-P-L-A-Y. Simple as that. 20% off plus free shipping with the code REPLAY. They know you heard about it from your Uncle Noli. Boom. And they know that we love them. They love us. We get the soup. Um, I get the products. And by the way, I have no hair from my neck down, just so you know. Manscaped.com. Delicious. So you have four lots you can rob from. One, two, three, four. Um, it's probably easiest if you just go in order. If you want, I think they, they get slightly more difficult as you go. Adventure of Dirk. What? Rugged. Dirk Rugged. Uh, it's cute. These these games. Uh, you know what? This is um, Sega Genesis. What is it? Yeah, called? yeah, it's a, yeah. It's on Sega Genesis. Do you know, I I came out ninety four. That's funny. It's like I'm 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 not that adept with this one. I never really played these. So uh, there was an SNES version as well. Oh, there's a Robo T Rex. Did you see that? <laughs> you know why? That's because of. Uh, now what do I do with that bird? Uh, blow blow a kiss. Really? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. And then jump back. Mm -hmm. Boom. All right, Wait. so there's a fuse, and you're going to jump into the, the cannon before it blows. So I got to hit it and then jump it? Yeah. No. Still no mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh, we got all those stars. Oh, is this I like it. Uh, oh, what's that guy doing? Oh, uh, right, dot, right? Yeah. yeah. He's like a little sound guy. He's like a little Paul. Look at that guy. Well, audio dude. He jump up in his head. Yeah. Well, hell, that's nice. Also, this part's a little tricky. I think you're gonna need the hammer. Get the hammer. Mm, I do. So jump up on that mech guy. It's gonna move. Uh, jump over the lights. Jump. And then hammer it, hammer it down so it goes lower. Oh, shit. Tough. It's not that tough. I'm just an idiot. No, it's timing. It is tough. So yeah, what I, I guess I was saying that they did an, an SNES version as well as the Sega Genesis version, but the uh, as per typical, uh, the Genesis version just looks and plays a little bit nicer. This one plays better. Yeah, like uh, visually too, it looks nicer. Uh, the Genesis graphics are just uh, a little bit better than. The SNES. Okay, so we're doing okay. I gotta get my guy back. Oh, this is the guy I need, right? Oh. So we're gonna jump, right? Hammer. Hammer! Oh. Damn it! Oh, because I hit the button and it switched characters. Oh, there's Frank uh, Welker. I'm being escorted off the lot. Gonna get you. They always win. Yeah. They're the Animaniacs. 
Recess! All right, let me just oh. try a little bit more. I was obsessed with Pinky and the Brain, man. Pork! No, no, wait, that's not it. Oh, oh, oh! I don't, know, I don't know why that. Oh, what that, am I doing? The, that idea of like <laughs> every day they try to take over the world. Every episode, yeah, yeah it's, it's genius. It's so brilliant. Hey, God, brain, brilliant. Yeah, that's who we have to have for you. We gotta have Maurice Lamarche on here. Oh yeah. What do we do today, Pinky? We're going to take over the world. I know that's Paul Bath. Yeah, right there. He looks just like him. What about the beard? That's what he would look like if he shaved. So jump first, right? Yeah, jump. Hammer. And then jump. Off. Oh, yeah, whenever it gets to the... Just wanted to get past that part. Now okay. you gotta go on a boat ride. Oh, well. This is like Jaws. Come on down and jump some of this shit. Yeah. Wanna finish the boat ride? Yeah. I don't like fit. Oh! Uh, use the hammer, I think. No, uh, I on the on the elephant. Uh huh. I didn't want to hit the elephant. Well, I mean, it was in your I way. like elephants. Yeah. My wife would be very upset. She's a big elephant. Uh oh, I think you got to. Uh... Oh, did you get past that? So you got to follow this down and then unlock certain areas. Are you in here. Yeah, that's like, I think that gives you a little bit more time on the clock, I guess. So keep going down. Go down? Yeah, I know. It's counterintuitive, but not. There. Whoa, jump up. Jump up. You got to get over to that little push button. You see it? Oh, I see. Because you don't want to go in them rotating screws. Yeah. Oh, and that's going to need to be. Um... Oh, yeah, hammered at. Hammer time. Yeah, you do it, boy, do it. Oh. Now it go up? Yep. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta wait for the logs to get closer. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just gonna, it looks like it's like ground meat. Yeah. My God, this is just. Like, is this actually, you've been on the Warner Brothers lot. Is there one of these on the Warner Brothers lot? That's it's called an audition. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna send you into the, the, the log crusher. Come on, Dot. You can do it. You can do it. Oh, no, go into that entryway. What's that? The, you see that opening over there? Oh, shit. Well, shit. See it now. There you go. Bam. Oh, okay! We well, gotta go in a little. Uh... Oh my god, this is like. this is. It's like, what is it like? Now I'm scared. Yeah. Well, what do I need? Uh, uh, kisses or shit? Or, uh, kisses, what? hammers, hammer? I mean. <laughs> What's better to have? I don't know. Uh... Oh no. Uh, you know, hammer just apparently is just the thing that you need. Yeah, I mean, when in doubt, smash it. Oh, jump over it. Oh. Jump over it and fall to your death. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, no. I mean, the gut on that guy. I know. You know what, the, you know what bothers me more than the gut? Didn't shave. <laughs> I mean, if you're a little overweight, take, still take care of yourself. <laughs> I mean, come on. All right, let's, let's give him one more shot, guys. One more shot, uh, and then we're going to get to... Yakko himself, because this is not, and it's from the beginning. That's the thing, we talked about this before, these games, man. Yeah, yeah that's perfect, Nolan, perfect timing. Huh? <laughs> Just don't even know the timing. Just such a numbskull. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're up, dude, with your hammer. Hammer it. Let's jump in. I like this part. Okay, get them. There you go, that's yeah. nice, real nice. Kind of reminds me, uh, did, I, I don't know, do you ever remember, do you ever play Donkey Kong Country? We, we need to play that game on, on this show. Oh, I would love to, yes, my, you know what we love that was my kids. Uh, there's a, a whole level on Donkey Kong Country that's just like cannon to cannon, like you just fly across the uh, screen. So don't forget, you gotta go to the hammer. Who, who would go here? This is a terrible place. It's just way to death. I guess Look at that. Raptor, Park? Robo Raptors, are you kidding me? I'm jumping, no, I'm jumping on the... Oh, Dot, kiss him. Kiss him. Yeah. Oh, I, you know what? I don't want this game to ruin my love of... I love how even on the... So on the 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 Genesis on the game box, like, they, yep. they had, like, a write-up. And the write-up was, like, from the beginning. However, these three were labeled too wacky, too wild, and just too zany to let loose on an unsuspect, unsuspecting public. 
Their comical genius was far too ahead of the times. Behind top secret closed door meetings, the studio executives, vice presidents, managers, managing vice presidents, chief executive di vice directors of managing, and some people who were really important decided to lock them up immediately in the Warner Brothers water tower. Uh, they remained imprisoned in that water tower for over 60 years when they escaped. As soon as they got out, the Warner Brothers sister, brothers and sister immediately began to amuse themselves by wrecking havoc upon the film stages all across the studio lot. All right, we're getting crazy here. I'm not going up there for those stars. I know it's all about stars, but let's just keep them out of the... Let's just wait. I wish each star had like a name, like a famous person's name on it, you know? Like a Hollywood star. Like what star would have that? Would've... Merv Griffin. Merv. <laughs> you just got Merv star. That was Merv Griffin. Next one could be Carrot Top. <laughs> Does Carrot Top have a star? I don't know. Oh man. Oh, he gotcha. But I was trying to help him. What a prick. I think you gotta blow a kiss maybe. Really? Yeah. Oh. Or just try to bite your ass. He bit me, and I was on a. Oh, you, you, that doesn't work. You, you know, don't boat. We need a bigger boat. Need to blow a kiss? Maybe. I'm trying to think. Like, how else would you get past the? the I don't know, but I need something. What is that up there? You miss Merv Griffin. Let's give her kisses. No. I just, I just watched that. Do you see that? I just let him get eaten by piranhas. Well, I mean, he kind of deserved it. I feel like I'm on like a, the music in this is, feels like I'm on like a bad Disney ride where it just keeps looping the same zone over and over and over again. Like, um, like it's a small world or something. All right, now we got to go back. This is a little hair raising for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, oh no. I just killed it's my like... favorite characters. You know what's off? No, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this game because I love these characters so much and I've just, poor, just let them down. Poor enemy. Um, you know what I don't get, um, and kids, but you're going to get, uh, just as a sidebar, um, retro replay pin. Check that out. See that right there? Drew, who's this for? Tell them. This is for our Retro Replay members that have been with us for a year or longer. If you've been with us for a year or longer, this is coming to you. For free. For free. Yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? Not this one. Because this has been up my nose. That's where that's been. We are missing one. It's, it's not my nose. <laughs> uh, See this one? I, I, I can't do this. I can't kill my favorite uh, players um, because uh, one of these characters is one of my favorite people. Uh, Rob Paulson, ladies and gentlemen, the one and the only. Let's do this. Uh, so here, welcome in. It's Rob Paulson, everybody. What, look at what he got. Oh, he's got a big, tasty. My health drink. It's a Frappuccino. Yeah, I'm a health nut. You know what I see at the bottom? The thing is, I got to see the bottom of all the caramel. That's the best part. You're going to you're gonna get after totally. that. Totally. That's, that's because that's my post-cancer uh, health regimen. Yeah. Yeah. If I don't have this every day, then I'll get cancer again. It's They told me that at Starbucks, so I can't believe Well, you got to believe them. Oh, By yeah. the way, so folks, this is somebody who's like beaten cancer, uh, is a legend. He's one of my heroes. And I love that. You know something? I know people have gone through that and they do uh, the, 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 some form of cancer or some life threatening uh, and which becomes life altering sometimes, most of the oh, time. Oh, yeah. And but, you know, and, and, and I know that you make a lot of changes for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the better. Like I'm going to change some health habits. I'm going to walk. I'm going to do something. But there's also that part of you because my dad had some heart trouble and he went through some surgeries and he's fine. But he's also yeah. like. Uh, you know, they said, well, you know, you, you got to do this, you got to do that, and you should really, uh, you know, maybe stop with the cigars. And he goes, I'm 84. I, I really like my cigars. So I'll do the other stuff, but yeah. I'm going to keep doing the cigars. No, I, I, and I totally get that, Nolan. I, I, um, I'm almost 84, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, <clears throat> I think when you're, let me put it, and it's, a, it's kind of a left-handed bit of what's the word i'm like it's not luck nobody wants to go through cancer heart disease how whatever yeah however 
when you have something that can be life altering and it doesn't kill you and you go through it later on in your life. I was diagnosed with my throat cancer at 59. It wasn't like I was a young father faced with my children not having me or my wife doing it alone or anyway. It was just like, okay, this is something, you know, you got to have to deal with. If you don't, it will kill you. But we got it. The treatment is you're going to feel like it's killing you. But, it, you know, and the glorious upshot of all of it, Nolan, is that I have a much more important story to tell, particularly because of nice folks, you know, we're the best of friends. But when people give give me a chance to discuss my experience, uh, it's a platinum lining. I mean, I, I, I don't want to go through it again. Right. But I never, honest to God, knew how, how, what a great opportunity it turned out to be for me, um, particularly because I, I wasn't young. I'd already had a lot of uh, a wonderful life. Um, I've still got a lot of it to go, but now I can help. And that's, that's the story. Yeah. But you know, it, 59, you know, um, unfortunately it's strange you say that. So we lost my mother-in-law at 59 mm -hmm. to smoker, uh, small cell lung cancer. And, um, so we've, uh, you know, I've been involved with a lot of charity work in, in sure. different for American Cancer Society and different things. And, uh, but it, it, you know, it changed our life, um, oh. uh, you know, uh, obviously, but it, it's, it's interesting to see that, you know, when you say, well, I'm a young man, I think that's just been your outlook. Cause 59 yeah. is pretty young. I'm sitting there going, it is now. I mean, the, now, the, yeah, this is a guy who is. just turned 50. Remember I just turned right. 50 and I'm sitting there going, 59 is not that far away. So no, and, you know. and, and things have changed a lot because of the types of procedures your, your dad went through. Um, uh, it, trust me, it was not ever lost on me, Noli, that it literally it, thousands of people on both sides of the equation, physicians, chemists, oncologists, researchers, and patients had to go through procedures that were a bit of a coin toss. Some patients yeah. died from the treatment. They said, okay, that's too much. Let's back it up for the next patient. I and your dad are the incredible beneficiaries of literally thousands of people who have put their reputations and lives on the line and often lost them to make sure that down the road, I walk in, they say, okay, you've got stage three squamous cell carcinoma. Um, you're in great shape, no pre-existing conditions. We know what to do. You're not going to like it, but it's going to work like a charm because we know what to do. Now, 10 years from now, my treatment may seem barbaric, but 10 years ago, they just started cutting on me, you know, excising this lump in my neck and exposing me to, now they don't do that. So the, um, I, I mean, there is, the obvious downside is, it's frightening, it hurts like crazy, it's miserable. The upside far outweighs the down. Sure. If, you know, it, it, when you're talking about a woman like your poor mother-in-law, that's a different story. I was never told at, this, at the top of this that I was gonna die. They said, you're gonna die someday, but not from this. If you don't do anything, two years from now you'll be miserable, four years from now you'll be dead. And you're gonna go out looking like Roger Ebert. And that's not a way you want to go out. So it didn't take me long to jump on it. But you see my point. It's, it is a remarkable time in which we're living. And because I think I got this particular diagnosis at a stage where in my life, where I'd already had a career in which people were familiar with Yakko or Pinky or Raphael or Donatello, all that stuff. I already had the ear of thousands of fans just because of the nature of how you and I move through our lives. We're joyful. We have. We live our lives in utter gratitude. We know how lucky we are to have the families we have, the careers we have. We are all about the joy. But to be able to be diagnosed at 59 or 60, now I have those ears of all those fans with a much more important story to tell. Yeah. And, yeah. and that's what you're helping me to do. It's it's fantastic, buddy. Well, the other thing about it, though, is and and again, is is just, uh, you know. 
not to just lay it on, seem like I'm laying it on thick. You have always been uh, somebody that I've looked up to, not only because of your talent, but of the way you've handled yourself. And I mean, I, there are people who have met you and, and then I'm like, oh, you got to work with Rob Paulson. Isn't he amazing? He goes, and people who first meet you, they, and I've known you for years, and they go, is he is he really that nice or is the cuz 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 he, he was, up again cuz yeah. he was yeah or is he, or is he hammered no is is he really that he is so positive and and outgoing and kind and you know be, you know and I and I laugh and I said listen I'm from New England we don't trust anybody like that but then you find out that he's like from Michigan and he's a Detroit guy and he's a hockey fan and it's like some of the best professional athletes who have too much money are hockey players because they're yeah. just the most down to earth guys. I said, no, I said, no, it, it, he is, Rob Paulson's the real deal. And Thank you, as a human being, not just as a talent, you know, and it's, it's one of those things that I always, uh, and, and I tell, I've told, I said this on your podcast, you were the one who taught me every time uh, you walk out of a session, thank you for the work. And I remember yeah. people going, it's Rob Paulson. He's thanking me for the work. It's like, <laughs> And, you know, and I, I was like, and I, and I actually give you credit. I said, well, as Rob Paulson taught me, thank you for the work, guys. I appreciate it. And it's just, you know, and then there's younger actors now seeing me do that. Hopefully it just yes. keep, keep moving that forward. But no, I think that, that, and I think that's probably one of the things that helped you through that re recovery so oh. well. So you touched on Animaniacs. We played the yeah. game today. And, uh, well, first of all, I, I, I just want to tell you about the game a little bit. Something I didn't know, uh, Drew. Producer here, help me. Um, I did not know this. The the voice is there's, there's five people basically in this game, five actors, okay. and it's literally like a hall of fame. Rob Paulson, uh, I don't know if you heard about it. He played Yakko. Yes. Then there was Tress and uh, McNeil, and of course, genius, lovely, my one of my favorite She's people the on the planet. Uh, Jess Harnell, sweetest guy ever. Uh, shiniest. We had him on the show. Yeah. He's the shiniest. shiniest. Uh, but I didn't know that in this game, Yakko, uh, Wacko, and Dot were trying to stop Pinky and the Brain from taking over the world. Yes. So exactly this right. was, so you double dipped and Maurice LaMarge, and did you know the fifth name and possibly the legend to these other legends, Ralph the Guard, played by Frank Welker. Yep, your golf buddy. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just sitting there. I just looked at it. Listen, I went, wow, that is yeah. like a power group of, of people. Now, you know, and of course the Animaniacs, uh, some guy named, was it Spiel, 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 Spielman? Spielman? Is it Spielman, Spielman? Nice kid with a Super 8, a Super 8 camera from yeah. Phoenix. Yeah. He yeah. likes dinosaurs. Sp yeah. He likes lots of things. Uh, he likes money apparently because yeah, he's, he's really good it. really good at, at, at making it uh steven spielberg and animaniacs i was always a fan and yeah. um I, I, i've seen recently so what i want to do i want give me your take on this new um i, I don't even it's i wouldn't call it iterate this new rebranding or, or this new resurgence we'll call it a resurgence yeah, of animaniacs because i've seen yeah. people kind of going that, you know, social media, of course, which oh, sure. I, I, I'm i not a fan of necessarily, but it is part yeah. of our culture. But it's like some people are like kind of down on the whole idea that they're bringing it back. I'm one of those people going, what are you, well, and, and, and they're down on it before it even comes back, oh, you know. Of so so yeah. uh, what what's your take on like uh, what's your expectations? Or what, how are you feeling about this? Well, uh, firstly, you don't, don't ever bet against Mr. Spielberg. Ever. Ever. Um, this is such a unique opportunity, Nolan. When, when you think about it, not only are we, have we already beaten the odds because we're able to pay for shit doing this wonderful gig right. with the very people whom you mentioned. All those people you talked about in Animaniacs are mutually dear friends. We love yeah. each other. I've known Tress McNeil. The only people in the world I've known longer than Tress are my siblings now that my parents are gone. And I've noticed right? that she was a cock yep. I noticed that she was a cocktail waitress at Charlie Brown's in the marina, and she is now the unqualified, most gifted, prodigious voice talent in the history of female Hollywood voice talents. Period. Maybe she and Frank 
I don't think there's anybody more prolific. Um, no, you're probably right. Right. So now we do Animaniacs. Everybody goes on to live their lives. We all won Emmys. We all made a nice living. Um, I'd worked with Steven Spielberg on half a dozen projects before. 25 years later, later uh, all this new technology goes by. Mr. Spielberg calls Sam Register, the head of Warner Brothers Animation, a few years ago and says, hey, man, I see <clears throat> what Rob Paulson and Randy Rogel and, you know, they're out doing Animaniacs in concert around the country. And, man, those guys can still kill it. And, you know, people love this show. Um, what do you think about doing this again? And, of course, we all said, sure. Yeah. Do you know that Mr. Spielberg, at 70-plus years old, went to every pitch, Apple, Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon. He attended every pitch in person. He made it very clear at the beginning because he's a fan, he's a nerd. More importantly, he understands, understands that the authenticity, the authenticity of the characters is what is important in this realm, not celebrity. He could call Liam Neeson to be Ralph the Guard, or he could have uh, Peter Dinklage and Russell Brand be uh, Pinky and the Brain, respectively, you know? But he said, here are the pictures of the four actors who are going to be Yakko, Wacko, and Dot and Pinky and the Brain. It's Rob Paulson, Jess Harnell, Tress McNeil, and, and um, Maurice LaMarche. Period. End of story. That's what's going to happen. Whoever buys this, these guys are in. Now, that is such a unique experience for any journeyman mm -hmm. actor, any of us. Then to have the technology by which I can, we can do what we discussed earlier. Watch this stuff in real time and uh, 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 it's just mind blowing. So then we're working on it for a year and a half. It's getting ready to go. A Couple of weeks ago, Hulu released about a two minute trailer. Five days, it's got six million views. 22 years later and I'm still a knockout. Now, the overwhelming majority is, holy, this is unbelievable. And it is. I, I had not seen it. it, had, it we dropped it when we did a, a, a virtual thing for New York Comic Con a couple weeks ago. Uh, uh, a like virtual a, what they, um, panel. panel. Zoom panel, and yeah. The audience, yeah, pa they flipped out. So now if people go to just punch in Hulu Animaniacs trailer and you'll see it between the two they've released. It's got some just on just on YouTube, let alone IGN, all the other collectively on the three major sites it's been released on. It's probably getting close to 10 million views in a month. Now, that's probably not Star Wars realm, but it's a pretty big goddamn deal. I, I won the lottery, man. Yeah. I, I cannot tell you how, how grateful I am. Uh, I, I want to ask you, that famous, you sang the world song, is that, is it true? Now, I know you'll be honest with me. That was your first take? Yes. Yeah, we did it in one take, but we did two. The one you guys and Drew and everybody and your boys uh, grew up listening to um, was the first take. It was written by uh, my dear friend, I'm working with him tomorrow on another song, uh, Randy Rogel. The first song he wrote is the one with audition pieces, Yakko's World. So Randy wrote that. He wrote, it's a great big universe and we're all really puny. We're just tiny little specks about the size of Mickey Rooney. You might think that you're essential. Try inconsequential. It's a big universe and you're not. Shut the front door. Yeah. And he's doing that at a higher level now, 25 years later, wow. that's pure, unadulterated genius. So when I went in to record that song, I'd rehearsed it for a week. I had the music in front of me. I was ready to go. And it fits together. Oh, my God. It's yeah. just beautiful. Yeah, it's seamless. So yeah, I did it. The first take is what they kept. But the real story is the song. And... What I'll sing for you is Randy came to my rescue because obviously the world has changed a bit. So Randy, because he had an extra seven minutes on a Tuesday, <laughs> sent me this months ago. Check this out. 
Montenegro and Bosnia, Herzegovina, the Soviet Union is gone. South Africa, Georgia, Moldova, Latvia, Belarus, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, hey, Kazakhstan, hey, then there's Tajikistan too, hey, hey, Turkmenistan, hey, Kurdistan, Armenia, Tonga, Palu, Lithuania, Serbia, Kosovo, U.S. Samoa, the Balkans, Brunei, Macau and Crimea, then Eritrea, Ukraine and Estonia, here's Macedonia, New Caledonia, Eastern Slavonia, Ivory Coast and Cape Verde, Andorra, the Solomon Islands, Dubai. Goodbye. How about that? Isn't that great? I got no words. Wow. I got to say, you know, sure, there's there's Yakko and there's Pinky, but you know my favorite. Yes. <gasps> what we have is beautiful and you can't destroy it. All righty then. I, the other day, Let's I... Let's bring I, back I Jimmy so Neutron. Let's oh, you know what? Too. Hey, man, why not? He's developed his own little fiefdom of celebrity. Yep. People love that guy. Uh, so there's and memes, apparently. My my son, my 17-year-old, oh comes in and he goes, Dad, have you ever seen this? Is Carl Weezer. And I'm like, it's my favorite character. That's that's my buddy. It's Rob Paulson. He goes, yeah. you know Carl Weezer? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. He goes, can you do these things for my friends? I'm like, there's cameo for that. Go give Robbie some cash. Yeah. yeah. I think the one he's talking about is, Excuse me, are you going to finish that croissant? Are you going to finish that croissant? Knock yourself out. Yeah. Now, I don't know what that's about. It was an episode. The The person I'm asking is Billy West, another one of our genius pals. Mm -hmm. And that little, are you going to finish that croissant? Has got, I don't know how many millions of different iterations and clips and cut up and all that. That's it. So That's the one. He I came up to me and I'm just like, what is it? He goes, I don't know. He says it's the greatest, and I'm going, and like I, I, I'm gonna. I, it's nuts. Yeah. And I love that guy. Um, I wrote a uh, some lyrics to uh, Spooky for Halloween the other day, um, and put it on TikTok because uh, people love Carl on TikTok. He's got like 115 million views of different versions of Carl. So I wrote. Um, you know, in the in the show, he had a big crush on Jimmy's mom. Oh yeah. So he goes, uh, in the cool of the evening, when I'm thinking about my crush on Jimmy's mom, I text her from my phone and say, Hey Judy, would you like to pet a llama? Ba -ba. Ba, ba, ba. She says, I can't, Carl, please, because I've got cookies to bake. And I say, please, Mrs. Neutron, I fear my heart you'll break it. Love is kind of crazy with a spooky older girl like you. <laughs> and so it got all kinds of views. And people <sighs> love Carl. And that's one of those instances, not unlike Nathan Drake, when it, the visual works perfectly with the actor works perfectly with the dialogue yeah. and it becomes seamless oh no Carl, it, yeah he's I, something I, else I, I love that guy and and that is a direct result of the animators talking to me once we started a roll and they would start hearing me um riff a little bit and they would say could you do more of this or try less of yeah. that and they and, and man when it works, animation is absolutely freaking magical. Yeah. And and well, and they, so you're saying example. they, they kind of dialed it in with you. Totally. To get exactly how I, that goes. I had nothing to do with that. They, they were in Dallas, a company called DNA Productions, and they called me and said, hey, we really dig Carl. And I said, oh, my God. I, he's, I love doing that character. Could you do a little more of this? Because we know we've got some great things that we can riff with on our computers. And... Oh my God, if I would say, oh, my scapula, they would, they would do these little shuddery things that worked so, the visual was brilliant, but only because the animators took the time to ask me to mess with them, yeah, to, but, to play with them. Yeah, that's beautiful. And it makes it a seamless character. Oh, collaboration I like that. love that. Yeah, it's just, and, and the proof <sighs> is in the pudding. That show's 18 years old. The new episode hasn't been made in a decade and a half, but... Man, if well, I start ripping his car, all people start doing what you're doing right now. It's fabulous. It's my favorite. It's absolutely <laughs> it's my funny. favorite. Um, 
<laughs> that still makes me giggle. Rob Paulson, you're a gem. That. You're a treasure. Thanks, you're you're uh, my hero, my mentor. Uh, I love you. Listen, this is always really a pleasure. I just love you, pal. And thank love you, you very too. much. And Drew, thank you, buddy. Nice you're hearing you. <laughs> all the all the replayers love you. Appreciate you, guys. Animaniacs, November twentieth. Uh, don't miss it. Uh, I know I won't. Uh, pick up Rob's book uh, because it's it, it, the it's inspirational. And uh, I'm going to come by. I want I want mine signed. You got it, buddy. Uh, and thank you very much. And um, uh, your folks can find me at uh, at Yakko Pinky on. Oh, on, they um, they know Twitter. where to find you. Oh, thank. We'll put all okay. those up. Thank they you. know where in to the, find you. In the meantime, um, um, I just want to tell you, keep a cool tool, a firm worm, and don't let your meat loaf. <laughs> that's, my, <laughs> that's my funny comedy joke. I can't promise that at my age, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Carl, but uh, I'll do my damnedest. I'm on the light switch. Firm right. worm. Oh, my God. I can do it badly, so... All right. That was great, pal. I love you, man. Love you too, pal. Thank you so Thanks, much. Buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, right. one and only Rob Paulson. Thanks, buddy. Take good care, brother. You too, bud. Bye. Bye-bye. Welcome, everybody. It's time for Retro Feud. As always, I have the lovely Pagan assisting me. Hello. Uh, and today's contestants, well, they're... I mean, they're no strangers to the replayers. These are these are longtime members, longtime replayers, founding 500. Clearly, probably founding five. I don't remember, but they're they're pretty high up on the food <laughs> that, chain. Yeah, yeah. I'll take that. yeah. I think you were members before I was, which is good. Uh, it's Cassie Bear and uh, Josie. Let's say it right. It's a Y, but it's Josie. You got it. You got it. Josie and the Pose Cas. Very nice. It's very, very beautiful. <laughs> Um, so I can see the questions. Uh, it's time to play the feud! Um, here's how we're gonna do it. Uh, first of all, we gotta see who goes first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a number between one and 20. You're gonna pick and whoever wins, whoever's closest, gets to choose if they wanna take the first five questions or go second. So I'm thinking of a number between one and 20. Kessie. 16. Josie. Damn it, she took my number. Uh, I'll go with 10. <laughs> the number was seven. Josie, you get to pick. Do, would yes. you like to go first for the first five questions, or would you like to go second after you see and know what Kessie's done? <laughs> I'll go second. Okay, Kessie, are you ready? Hi. Okay, no. we will put, uh, we are under a very strict time limit. We're going to throw 17 minutes. I don't know. Oh, no. Appreciate more brevity. Take your time. Here's the first question. When you get out of bed at night, name something you would be likely to unexpectedly trip over. A cat. Number two. Name an Australian guest that has been on Retro Replay. Lee McIntyre. <laughs> name a word or phrase that begins with the word hot. Soup. <laughs> Especially around here, it's hot, it's hot and it's probably too thick. Uh, name something that only happens once every few years. Uh, can I pass? You don't want to. This Drew, you let out the cage. Drew out of the cage. Hey, you know what? We're gonna take that. We'll take that. Uh, number five. Name something you might bring on a date. Drew, no, no, no. No, not Drew. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Take your time. Name something you might bring on a date. It, you don't want, it, if I said name something you don't want to bring on a date. Um, I mean, not, not unless, your unless your Drew's parents. your date. Your parents. Your parents. <laughs> That's a phenomenal answer. That's five questions, fantastic. Oh, no. Um, let's go back. Let's take a look. Cassie, how you did. When you get out of bed at night, name something you would likely be unexpectedly trip over. Uh, you said cat. Uh, number one answer was shoes, but yes. Number three, 34 points right off the gate. This number two answer. Number three answer, of course, Richard McGonagall. 
Uh, oh. <laughs> that was the number three answer. Your next question, name an Australian guest that has been on Retro Replay. Uh, number one answer, Claudia Black. Fantastic. Oh, crap, yeah. Followed oh, by yeah. Alana Pierce. Oh, and but no. number three answered for twenty two points, Liam McIntyre, the hunky Australian, hunky from <laughs> down under. He's hunk under. Nah. <laughs> hunk under. Nah. Hunk under. <laughs> nah. Name a word or phrase that begins with the word hot. Number one answer: hot dog. It's the hot potatoes. Number three: hot, hot cake. <laughs> Who, who took the survey? I'm going to tell you something. I think hot cake is as odd as hot soup. So I'm going to give you the 16 Thank points you. for the 16. hot cake. Because what goes better with cake than soup? Hot cake. Name something that happens once every few years. You wanted to pass. Uh, we could have taken. Oh, I did answer that one. Did I? I, um, what was your answer? I, I drew out of his cage. Oh, that drew out of his cage. Um, well, you know what? Um, we would say eclipse, uh, elections, <laughs> leap years, Olympics. There's a plethora of good answers, but you gave us Drew's out of his cage. You know what? But the five people actually said Drew sheds his skin. Oh, really? He does have to oh. come out of his cage for that. Five points. Five points to Cassie. Love it. Nice. He sheds his skin and grows it back like almost immediately. It is disturbing. Uh, finally, name something you might bring on a date. You again oh, said Drew. Oh, bring! I thought not bring. Oh, oh, you thought it was not bring? Yeah, not bring. That's why I said parents. Name something you might bring on a date. You said parents, and I was like, wow. <laughs> okay, I tell you what. I'm gonna give you a shot, just quickly. Name something you would bring. The money, money, money. Money. Fine. Eighteen points. <laughs> Cassie's always a good time. Quick, sing something. You have a beautiful singing voice. What? Everyone. What, what yeah. does Cassie have? Cassie has 95 points. 95 what? points. It's a solid outing. Josie, are you ready? You have to beat not you have five questions to beat 95 points. It's doable. Ready, it's doable. Let's do it. As long as, as long as like parents, it's not one of the answers. <laughs> which I haven't even looked at the question, so it might be. So I shouldn't say that. Anyway, here we go. 60 minutes on the clock, whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> this this first question, really? This is, just, okay. This is a real question. So name something you might beat, B-E-A-T. Something you might beat. A punching bag. Name a made up character slash persona from like a character done on Retro Replay. Seamus the Knight. Name someone you might call if you were in trouble. My mother. Your parents. Yes, I can't believe after all this, there's actually a question. And I just said, don't say parents. And the, it, by the way, it's number one answer. We're not even done with this, but you got the best one. My God, I'm not good at this. Here we go. Apart from Drew, what else might you find in a cage? In a cage. A uh, hamster. Name something people do in their sleep. Talk. Okay, talk. Okay, okay. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, hey, that's the end of the round. Woo, just in time. You got that one under the buzzer. Uh, beautifully done. Uh, looking to beat 95 points. Name something you beat. You said a bag. Um, I'm going to look like that's like in a, the bag is for, oh, so, so number one answer was a rug. Number two was eggs. Number three was an opponent. Could the bag be the training for the opponent? I kind of like that. I kind of think so. I said punching bag. Punching bag. Oh, you know what? Oh, no, 10. A game. It could be like a, a game. A, 10 points to Jossie. Starts off with 10. Here we go. We're, we're rocking it up. Um, name a made-up character or persona from Retro Replay. You said Seamus. I can't believe this. Nobody said Seamus. Number one, <gasps> number one, Uncle Sal. Uh, number two, Phil Kensington, oh. Uncle Noli, a lot of uncles. Uh, Frank and Edith, Anus and Anus. 
and nip and tuck. Nobody said Seamus. Uh, that's that's oh you know what I'm giving. I'm giving. You know what I'm giving. I'm giving uh, uh, with the story. I'm giving three points for that because I I'd say Seamus. He's up there. there. Yeah, Seamus and I. Oh well, you know what? Oh no, I get it. I get it. No, no three points. I'm taking this back because okay. it's not a character. It's a it's a character from one of the games. No, no, it's a zero. No, no, technically his name is Arthur. His name's Arthur. Uh -huh. That's right, but uh -huh. Arthur's not on there either. So. Okay. I tried. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Tried. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Cassie, d don't help her. You, she, I think she's got this one. Name someone you call your trouble. Parents, number one answer, 35 points right there. Bang. Okay. Uh, apart from Drew, what else might you find in a cage? Uh, number one answer, dangerous animal. Uh, but that would be Drew, so I don't get that. Uh, number two answer, though, hamster for 23 points. 23 points. Uh, bring us up to a total of, uh, how, how many points we have here? 68. 68. So, mm -hmm. name something people do in their sleep. <laughs> number one answer is snore. But the number two answer for 35 points, talk. Mm -hmm. Talk. 35 points, which gives her a total of... 103. Yes, he's the big winner! Yes. yes, she's done it. She's done Great it. She job. came from behind. Even with the goose egg, she was able to pull it out. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, this this was a tight one. I'm going to tell you. Uh, once again, Drew, shedding skin, molting. Mm -hmm. um, My secrets are out. You know what's terrible? is like I'm looking over off screen at Drew, and I got to tell you, Fresh haircut? Happening. Fresh hair? No, fresh haircut. Back from a, a little bit of a, a, a little time off, a little uh, good weather, and the guy looks solid. I'm gonna tell you something. It looks he looks better than I feel. If that means anything. Uh, are, you, are you looking at Paul? Drew's uh, the other guy. Paul's the always a stud. Guy. Paul's always. A, you know what? Yeah, there's so true. much hair to my right oh. off screen. <laughs> Wow. It's like a pile of hair that. So when do I, when should I expect what to do. It's like when cutting it. My free car. What? Jossie, you're the big winner. You win absolutely nothing, because uh, we have nothing. But you win my my love and adoration. Uh, Cassie, you already had that, so you know, just share some of that. Ooh. Love the get good shirt. Thank uh, you. Way to support our boys down under. Cassie, Josie, thank you so much for joining us here on Retro Feud. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, thanks for being members and and. Uh, you know, playing silly games with us and just having some Always fun. fun. You look lovely. Mwah, mwah. Love you all. And parents, parents. <laughs> parents. Yeah. yeah. Take care, guys. Oh, Thanks so much. That's it, guys. Retro Feud, another rousing edition. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Of the feud. All right, guys, it's time for our photos on the bar this week. Up first, Alfie Rivera doing the face that, you know, only a mother and Uncle Nolly could love. Uh, Alfie Rivera there, and then next is Gisela D. Gisela D, um, I'm hoping it's a costume party. And finally, Red Lobertin, Red Lobertin, Brett C. And he's got the Uncharted uh, Funko Pop. There they are, our photos on the bar. Next up, the member shout outs. First up, get good level, Connor Lagan, or Lagan, Connor Lug Lagan, Connor Lagan. Anna Peterson, and Jeremiah Gonzalez, oh, and Luis Reza. Luis Reza. I know you, Luis. Uh, at the Drew's Soup level, Ernest Shrink is up there this week. And finally, at the uh, Ted Bees level, Ultra Bees level, the second shift, Eric B. Dem Nuts Gaming, Jordan P. Uh, Dr. Chiz. Sounds dirty, could be dirty, probably not dirty. And of course, Luis Reza, Luis Reza. Luis Reza is in the get good level and the altered beast level. Luis, you know if you're an altered beast, you get everything and get good. You know what? You do you. We love you for it. That's probably a typo on one of those. Guess what? We don't care. That, he's Luis. I love Luis. He's whatever he wants to be. That is the member shout outs for this week. And this is your shout out. I got you, Paul. Ah! Louis twice. And there you go. That's our show. Thank you to Rob Paulson uh, for being such a great guest. Thank you to Luis for being a member twice. <laughs> we love you, buddy. 
And thank you to all of you uh, who make this possible. Thanks. We appreciate it. And we will see you next week on Retro Replay. Oh, that was like a professional outro. I like that. It'll never happen again. Yeah. See you next week. Coming out. Thank you.